Hey guys, it's Katie, and I'm here today to review How Soccer Explains the World, An Unlikely Theory of Globalization by Franklin Fuller. Now, for those of you who don't know me that well, I am a huge, huge soccer fan, and I have been since I was pretty young. I'm super excited for the World Cup this summer. You do not understand how excited I am for the World Cup this summer. So I figured that I would give this a read with the hopes that I would really like it and just see what this is all about. I don't read nonfiction very often at all, but it's been sitting on a shelf for about eight years. A friend loaned it to us. It's technically probably ours now because he's out of the country and it was okay it was interesting but it really wasn't what I was expecting it to be but what this really what this book is really about is economics <laughs> how soccer is used as a tool to describe diff different economic theories. Kind of. I don't know how to describe this book in a, a great way, but I mean, one of the things in the book, at the very beginning of the book, he said, um, this book has three parts. The first tries to explain the failure of globalization to erode ancient hatreds in the game's great rivalries. It's, it is the hooligan heavy section of the book. The second part uses soccer to address economics, the consequences of migration, the persistence of corruption, and the rise of powerful new oligarchs like Silvio Berlusconi, the president of Italy, and the AC Milan club. Finally, the book uses soccer to defend the virtues of old-fashioned nationalism, a way to blunt the return of tribalism. So it kind of walks through different events that happened in certain countries and talks about kind of how soccer is important to them and just how it not only enabled some of the things that they were doing but how those societies changed and became kind of who they are through the game of soccer. They said it was kind of strange. It was good and interesting in a lot of ways because um, a lot of the countries he talked about in this book I have ties to or I've studied before so that was really cool to see but on the other hand I'm not very well versed in the economics world as in I never studied it and so I think because of that I lost what I was supposed to really get from this. Not that that's a bad thing, it's probably a failing on my part for just not not understanding. <laughs> but um, as I said, it was interesting enough that I wanted to keep going. Not that I would put it down if I hated it. Anyway, because I'm a completionist. It's one of my biggest flaws as a reader. But at the same time, it was also really repetitive as a book. It just kept saying kind of the same thing over and over again. So that was kind of annoying, but it was really fun because as into soccer as I am, this book talked about some really big players and some really awesome teams that I follow or just know from World Cup, Euro Cup, the works. And so that was really fun. But in terms of understanding what I was supposed to get from this, I just kind of got a little bit lost. No. I have very mixed feelings about this book. <clears throat> On the one hand, I liked it because getting to see the historical events and wars and different things through talking about soccer and using the game as a tool to explain things was really neat. Now, on the other hand, just getting the overall message he was trying to send, I think, just was lost on me. Countries that he primarily focuses on are in Europe. So he starts with Serbia, 
And that's actually, in a lot of ways, the main thread that's running through the book, which was both fun and kind of frustrating to me because I am Serbian. And while we do have a history of being very violent and stupid in a lot of ways, it kind of got to be a little bit much. Because I mean, I was talking about the war at the beginning with the Croats and the Muslims. Because this was, I think, came out in 2005. And so it talked about that. And then it went to Ireland, Northern Ireland, and talked about things there. And a little bit in England. And we also went to Italy. There was a long chapter on Italy and also certain parts of Spain. And then we also went to... Iran for a little bit and I don't know it was just interesting looking at different countries and then he tied it up with America it just left a bit of a bad taste in my mouth at the end I don't know as I said my feelings on this book are very mixed and overall on Goodreads I ended up giving it a three out of five stars and it's a low three because, well, I, I was interested while I was reading it. I was interested enough and I was following what he was saying in terms of, like, soccer and history stuff. But in terms of economic stuff, nope. You lost me there, bud. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's generally my feelings about how soccer explains the world. An unlikely theory of globalization by Franklin Four. If you guys have read this book or you want to talk to me more about this book, feel free to comment or follow me on social media and we can talk there. Otherwise, I will just come back with another video for you guys again soon. Okay, bye!